A few months ago, the channel Kurtzgestadt had a video talking about terraforming Venus. It was a fascinating video, and I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. In it, he talks about an interesting concept of using electromagnetic mass drivers to fire materials into space, specifically from Mercury. Today we're going to be taking a look at how such a machine would work, and if it would work or not. A mass driver is, in essence, a railgun, which is two rails that act as conductive wires, an armature which houses the projectile and bridges the gap between the wires, and a massive power supply, which can produce in the order of millions of amps of current. The current flows from the positive terminal through the rail, across the conductive armature and projectile and into the other rail. Due to the direction of the current, the resulting magnetic field is vertical between the two rails. Because the current is traveling through the armature perpendicular to the magnetic field vector, we get a Lorentz force produced, which is perpendicular to both the rails and the magnetic field. This force results in acceleration, pushing the projectile out of the barrel at speeds near or even above Mach 5. The magnitude of this force can be predicted using the equation magnetic force equals the length of the rails times the current times the magnetic field. Now in the video, Kurtzgestadt talks about launching calcium oxide and other materials off of Mercury to terraform Venus. Let's take a look at Mercury real quick to get some numbers. Being the smallest planet in the solar system, sorry Pluto, it has a gravity of only 3.7 meters per second squared, and has negligible atmosphere. This is crucial as operating these mass drivers on Earth at hypersonic speeds creates shock waves that rapidly heat the air around the projectile, quickly degrading the driver. Using some simple conservation of energy equations, we can figure out the speed needed to escape Mercury's gravity. On the surface of any planet, you have gravitational potential energy. If you escape that gravity completely, you've converted all of your energy from potential to kinetic energy. We can rearrange this formula to get V alone. Plugging in Mercury's mass and radius, we find that we need to generate a velocity of 4.2 kilometers per second, or Mach 12.1. This is much past the current capabilities of the best rail guns on Earth, which can only reach Mach 7 at the highest speeds. Let's take a look at the requirements to create a railgun that can fire at Mach 12 using the previously mentioned FM equals LIB formula and Fnet equals MA. Putting them together and subbing in a formula to calculate the magnetic field, we get something that looks like this. We'll calculate for a length of 2 kilometers, a current of 42,000 amps, a mass of 1,000 kilograms, and a magnetic field radius of 0.5 meters. Putting that together results in an acceleration of 4,704 meters per second squared. Popping this figure into a kinematic equation, we get a final speed of 4.3 kilometers per second, which would manage to escape Mercury's orbit. All of this would happen in less than one second. This means that 10.7 kilowatt hours of electricity would be used, which is a massive amount of energy to be used in one second. However, one meter squared of solar panels on Earth can make 175 kilowatt hours per year of electricity. Since Mercury receives about seven times more electromagnetic radiation than Earth, a fairly small array of solar panels could power several launches per day. It should be noted that the massive acceleration of this mass driver means that it would really only be useful for launching mass materials into space, as anything delicate, such as satellites or people, would be squashed instantly from the 479 Gs of acceleration. However, when compared to the 21,600 Gs that projectiles in modern railguns experience, the former acceleration sounds fairly manageable in terms of material durability. Mass drivers could be the future for any sort of mass-scale space production, and would be used mostly on smaller planets or moons that lack an atmosphere. Even with today's technology, it is entirely possible to build a mass driver that could launch materials out of the orbit of smaller planets. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, and I will see you all soon with a brand new video.